Thank you, Daniel, for introducing me and uh, giving me this opportunity of presenting the work we are developing at CareNet. CareNet is the Care and Preparedness in the Network Society Research Group. And before I start, I'd like to thank you, Daniel Lopez and uh, Israel Rodriguez, who helped me prepare this talk. So today, I'd like to talk you about uh, one of the projects uh, we are developing within CareNet. <coughs> In CareNet, there is an interdisciplinary team of researchers that uh, work in the field of science and technology studies and bring to together expertise from social psychology, disability studies, and uh, feminist studies, and many other fields. The project I'm going to talk you about today is called CANDID. CANDID stands for Checking Assumption and Promoting Responsibility in Smart Development Project. So CANDID is about smart technology. When we think about smart technology, we think about uh, sensors and infrastructure systems. So the central question behind CANDID can sound a little bit unsettling. The question is, how can social scientists and humanity scholars help develop smart technologies? <coughs> so, if you think about it, when we talk about smart technologies, we, especially when we think about who develops smart technologies, probably we would think about uh, people like uh, ICT expert or computer scientist, engineers. So it's not immediate to think about the role of uh, uh, psychologists, philosophers, ethicists, and all these kind of people. So let me tell you first a little bit more about uh, what smart technologies are, and then I'll tell you about the rationale behind Candid. Smart technologies come from the idea and the uh, widespread reliance of sensors. You know that nowadays uh, sensors are extremely cheap to, to be produced, and they are widespread. So from an engineering perspective, our mobile phones, for example, can be considered sensors, because these devices send, continually send information about uh, who, where we are, what we are doing, with whom we are talking, what we are saying. So, the idea behind smart technologies is that uh, if we develop uh, all these kind of sensors, or if we use all the sensors we have already developed, and gather the information that these sensors are producing, integrate this information, analyze this information, we can use this information to take better decisions or to take automatic decision. This is the idea behind SMART. SMART is about uh, intelligence in the sense of artificial intelligence. It's about autonomous machines. So, for example, in the case of smart cities, when uh, we have sensors which are collecting information on uh, pollution level, on air pollution, okay, we can design the system that automatically tr trigger an alarm where, when the level of pollution reach a certain level. So the idea is to use ICT to help people take better decisions. But as you may already envision, this can be problematic. Who is designing this technology? Who is deploying this technology? For what purposes? What are the implications? What are the risks, the benefits? And also, how technology is changing society and the way we live, especially information technology. If we come back to the history of technology, and we come back, for example, to the 90s, and all the debate around GMOs, genetically modified organisms, you may remember that Monsanto tried to sell modified GMO soya in the European Union 
1996. And the company faced a widespread outcry from environmental organization and uh, many other groups who didn't want that kind of uh, food to be um, commercialized within Europe. So that is an example of what René von Schomper calls uh, irresponsible innovation. Irresponsible innovation is uh, the kind of innovation nobody wanted, but somebody did. And so it's uh, from the idea of irresponsible innovation comes the idea of responsible research and innovation. In 2013, René von Schoenberg brought a, an important paper in which he highlighted this idea of uh, a different research and innovation trajectory that took into, able to take into account what the society wants, what different group, different people want, not just uh, big corporations or, or experts. So in that paper he wrote, responsible research and innovation is a transparent interactive process by which societal actors and innovators be become mutually responsive to each other with a view to the ethical acceptability, sustainability and societal desirability of the innovation process and its marketable products. From this paper, which was an STS paper, came a policy, an European policy, which is called Responsible Research Innovation. This is an agenda which is um, promoted by the European Commission, the Director General for Research and Innovation, and there is a, a specific subunit, which is the uh, Science with and for Society unit. Okay? And what they try to achieve is to transform that idea into actual policies and policies into actions that make, have an impact into uh, actual research uh, uh, practices. So, this is where Candid stands. This is the contribution of Candid. What Candid try to achieve is to foster interdisciplinarity, is to foster the collaboration between social scientists and humanity scholars and ICT practitioners. How? Oh. Candid proposed to foster interdisciplinary work between different epistemic networks, so to open up the idea of having lay knowledge and expert knowledge, and proposing this idea of uh, anyone is an expert in his own field. So let's bring all stakeholders, which means all people who have something at stake, into the conversation. Let's create this extended peer conversation to help peers check mutual assumption. Assumption are something very interesting because it's what we take for granted when we approach a problem. So the aim of Candid, this is, uh, uh, and Candid is just one year project, so it's still ongoing. What we have been doing has been to uh, extend through a number of consultation, the participation of a wide range of stakeholders and peers, and try to create this conversation to check mutual assumption. We focus on two fields, the field of uh, self-tracking technology and the field of smart city and sensing infrastructure. So I'd like to end this talk by inviting all of you who are working on this technology, on an area related to these technologies, to come and join us by Twitter, by visiting our website, by commenting at IN3, and uh, work with us and share your knowledge and expertise. Thank you. <laughs>